Howdy folks, welcome to episode 8 of this Humpty Doo save in the Australian database. Today we have the opportunity to do the double, to win the Northern Territory Premiership and the Coca-Cola Cup. The boys very keen and also very confident after their 7-1 demolition of Adelaide River in the semi-final. But ECU Jundalup will be an unknown quantity. We haven't come across them before, so we don't know what to expect. In pleasing news for the club, Levi Goldschmeckel has signed a new contract with us. So he's going to be around with us for a little bit longer. He's been more a substitute player than a starter, but he will be invaluable as we go forward. He's only 17 years old and a future talent, no doubt. So just checking our recent results now, we've had a 4-1 win over Jabiru Joeys, with Dick Splash scoring three and Harry Dixon balls the other. So as you can see, though, Palmerston Panthers did us a real favour by knocking off Adelaide River 1-0 there. In the following match, it was a 5-2 victory over Lara Pinta with Splash once again with two goals. The boy who can't be named also got two and Harry Dixon balls with one. As you can see though, we've got a 13 point lead now with only six games remaining. So we are pretty well assured of winning this. Unfortunately, in that Lara Pinta game, we were to lose Hot Boy for five to seven weeks with fractured ribs. So at this time of year, we could really have done with him. But life goes on, of course, and I'm sure we'll still be up for it when we need to be. In very good news for the club, the reserves have won Group 18 by a sizable margin. Obviously, there's still four games to go in that competition, but we have an unassailable 14-point lead there. In the top performers there, you can actually see some of the players that have actually played some first grade this year. Simple Kid, Nick Doff and Eric Shen. But it's also good to see players like Lucky Bolger and Cleveland Steamer coming through well. They will aid the club greatly in the coming years. And just before we get to our first game of the day, we had a 4-0 win over Viking Alice Springs in round 35. So, still a 13 point lead, five games to go. So potentially this next game, we can actually sew it up. So we're going for the 4-2-3-1 again today with Splash up front. I love that partnership in the midfield between Scammer and Flea Balls and also the defense has been pretty solid there you can see the new signee there Goldschmeckel is starting for us today so I'm sure he'll be very excited about that just waiting for this game to get on board there the boys jumping up and down there as we get started not much happening in the first five minutes there uh, no shots on target or otherwise but it looks like Wilkins has a free kick here there he is the big man And there it goes, and he has wrong-footed the keeper. The keeper didn't even move. So 1-0 after 10 minutes. Bill Wilkins, the goal scorer from that free kick. As we watch it again, the keeper, he was playing with butterflies there, mate. There was nothing there, and the ball sailed into the net. So good to see. Two shots on goal, two on target, 1-0. As Giorgio prepares to throw in, there's Wilkins again, the goal scorer. Giorgio crosses it in and Splash heads it over the top there. So yeah, Wilkins having a strong game early there. Great goal and he's also playing very well in general play as well. But can't say that there's been a lot of highlights in this game so far. Although Kerr with the corner now, crosses it in and there's Splash with the head. His 69th goal. Nice. Congratulations, Dick. And Kerr just bringing it in again. And yep, Splash does really well to get over the top of the defender there without any problems at all. So 2 0 in the 30th minute. The Premiership could be coming our way today, fellas. As Tumor Fat prepares to play it out from the back, there's Flea Balls pushing it through there to Kerr. And there's Wilkins again. Can he get number two? Oh, that was an interesting save by the keeper. Obviously, that had a bit of power behind it. Wilkins obviously kicked the cream out of it because it rebounded nearly to the halfway line. But nothing much happening as we prepare for going into half time. It is actually Garuda with the ball now. And it is pushed through there, but Chuma Fat is back there. There's Kerr. Back to Chuma Fat, and there's Goldschmeckel, a new signee, although he was with us before, but he's just signed a new contract as we talked about before. The Garuda trying to, to uh, get the ball forward, just really can't penetrate the defence. It's Kerr pushing it through to Splash. Can he get goal number 70? Yes, he can. It is 3 0 now, just before half time. 
So once again, Kerr, who's been immense for us this year. Beautiful vision there. Crosses it in to Splash, who is unopposed. Rounds the keeper effortlessly. And it is 3-0. Goal number two for him today. And goal number 70 in the season. So I'm sure that there'll be a number of teams knocking on his door as we go to halftime. 3-0. And we've just brought on Doff onto the wing, which is quite interesting there uh, for Simbuki. As Joyce Pagruda looks to cross it in there. Um, oh, that was very, very close. Apologies, I just can't see the names of some of those players there. Okay, so it is Corey from Garuda playing it out from the back here. 59th minute. And there goes to Chuba Fat there. There's Kerr pushing the ball through again. Can Splash get his hat trick? No, it's well defended that time by the keeper. But it's still 3-0. Three, three and 60 minutes in. Not a lot happening there. And this looks like we're yep, you know, we've taken off Giorgio. And Bannerman has taken his place. And the armband as the skipper. Looking to make another substitution now. And Joel Karamanidis is going to come on. He's uh Hasn't had many opportunities. He's going to come into the defensive line there to take Goldschmeckel's place. It's always not a bad idea to blood these players, these new players, because we don't know who's going to be disappearing at the end of this season. I have a feeling that we could lose up to half the side. As we, in the 84th minute, there's Bannerman with the throw in there and Splash crossing it, and it's just gone to Corey, the keeper. Nothing much happening there. So 3-0 there. As Dick Meister picks up the ball there, puts it back to Chuma Fat there. And three balls again, there's Bannerman putting the ball through there. Splash unable to get on the end of that one. And they're putting it through there, and it is Pajanto by the looks. And again, the Garuda play is not too much too bad. There's Ansori there, and the goal is Yulianto. Ibrahim Yulianto scores the goal for Garuda. So 3 1. So they're trying to still get something out of this game, and it's good to see them fighting to the end. Our boys seem to have put the cue in the rack a little bit there, which is a little bit disappointing, as Kerr goes in with the corner. There's Scammer again, having a shot, curls it, but it goes over the bar. So 3-1 as we hit injury time there. So about a minute left, there's Adam there, crossing it to Joyce, and there's the big cross there, Bannerman's there. And now goal scorer Yulianto crosses it in, and it is Ansori who gets a second goal. So the boys have just dropped their bundle a little bit there, but I guess they've probably done enough to win this game and then the competition. As full-time hits, and there's the boys walking across the stage. Congratulations, lads, on a season well done. We've only got one more game to go in the season, and we've been undefeated so far. Had a couple of draws, but yeah, very, very good to see the boys on that stage and hopefully we can do the double later in this episode. The fireworks starts and the pool grounds cleaners are going to be having to clean that up for quite a while there. But wonderful sight that the Northern Territory Premiership is ours. Hey, you still did the best bargain, eh? So yeah, there we go, 13 points in it, and we've still got four rounds to go there. So just before the Coca-Cola Cup final, we do have a few games that were played between those two games. So in the next game, we face off or faced off against Adelaide River and had a lovely 6-1 win. Seems that we've broken their spirits, and even though Fucker Carcass is there, he was ineffective in that game. So 6-1. In round 38, we had a 6-3 win over McGinn's Lagoon. Again, that's sort of a bit of revenge over the two-all draw that they uh, got against us in the previous uh, encounter. And then in round 39, we had a 2-0 win over Scorpions Alice Springs. Not our best result, but once again, we're clearly in front there. 16 points now as we prepare for the Coca-Cola Cup final. So there's our side there, probably the strongest side we can put on the paddock there. Look at those combinations, farts to Zars, scammer to flea balls, Dixon balls to splash, and then you've got Giorgio and Kerr on the right. So there's a lot there that we can be happy about there as we prepare for the start of this game. 
We're on the dirt again as the players walk out onto the field. Uh, looks like both teams are feeling each other out pretty well there. It's still nil all. We've had two shots to nil so far. There's Brady for Drundaluk there. And Kerr puts the ball through but can't get it through there. Good defence by McDonald there. Lomax putting a cross in or trying to. Holds it up instead. And there we have a goal. So Moses Kalau has put the ball in the net. Fisher had nothing to do with it. He just didn't know what was going on there. So 10 minutes in. And Jundalup have taken the lead 1-0. So, oh, terrible start for the boys. But we're on the attack here now, and it's Brady taking the ball without much happening there. So Brady pushing it forward there. And there's George. Oh, he's made a big mistake there, and Lomax has a shot, and thankfully it was off target there. Although Fisher had it covered, I think. There's Fisher there playing out to Beans there. Astley. So 12 minutes in, we're down 1-0, but we do have a lot of fight in this. There's Zars putting the ball through, but it is cleaned up very well by the Drundle up the fence there. And they're going on the attack again, and there's Giorgio trying to defend that, but oh, they're in again. Miles puts the ball in the net, but it's been disallowed. It must have been offside. Let's have a look at the replay. Yeah, he's only just in front, but he definitely is, so it's a good call from the referee and just as well for us. 2-0 down after 14 minutes would have been a tragedy. Despite that though, we're still winning on X3, although no, we've just, ECU have just gone ahead of us there. Uh, Frank and Beans has also got a yellow card, that's not very good. There's Giorgio putting the ball forward there and flea balls as well. Splash, puts it through on a bit, Dixon balls, can he? Oh, he's just been denied by the keeper, he just had to do a little bit too much to get around him. As Zars prepares to cross it in for the corner, and it's defended well. There's Astley, there's Beans again, and Zars crosses it in, and oh, it's just defended by the keeper there. So Drunalop doing very well, there's Nazari there, and Miles crossing it out there. Yeah, five shots to four, but we are still 1-0 down as Dixon Balls has a free kick just outside the box there. Puts it forward and it's cleared the bar there. So still 1-0 to Drundalup. We're winning the XG battle, but the only battle that matters is the scoreboard and we are behind in that. So Delic puts it into Lomax there. Crosses it back into Kalau again. There's Hammond. And another shot there and Fisher doesn't have to play it in the end. It goes over the bar, but uh, putting a lot of pressure on us. Beans from the back. There's Flea Balls there. Scammer. Probably could have run to the line a little bit more there. The defence is there and cleans it up without a problem. But we've got the ball again through flea balls and there's Kerr and Splash has put it in. It's 1-1. But it's been called back. We've hit half time. It's still 1-0 one, one to Drumble it. With the XG, we are getting FM'd here really badly. 134 to 0.35. That's uh, not really good enough. We've got a couple of yellow cards there now too, so we've got to be careful. But no real highlights in the second half, which is a little bit concerning. So I think we're going to have to change things up a little bit. We're going to put two up front there, and Splash um, will come up to there, and Fuckboy, or the boy that can't be named, will come on. And we've actually made the big decision of taking Dixon Balls off and Frankenbeans and there. So, lost a lot of experience there, but we're just trying to do something different here. So, let's see what we can do. So, Goldschmeckle's also on for Beans. But uh, only 20 minutes of, of um, game time left before extra time and before um, injury time. And we're going to make another substitution. We're going to bring uh, the one of the attackers back into the attacking midfield. And we're going to bring Bill Wilkins on for Splash. Once again, probably a controversial move there. But we just need to try something different. Splash has sort of had a quiet game this game. And missed a few easy or well, easiest chances for him. So 15 minutes to go. It is still 1-0. Although we are creaming them in XG. 
1.5 to 0.39, but it doesn't seem to matter. And the boys can't do what they need to do and put the ball in the net. So, in the last five minutes, we're trying to fire her up and get them to work, but it's uh, four minutes of injury time left. And it is far through the ball at the back there. There's Fisher to Astley to flea balls as he runs he's got plenty of space to move there although he's been dispossessed but Kerr picks up the scraps there can he score it oh he's been denied by the keeper oh nine times out of ten he scores that goal he's had such a big year but when it counts he hasn't done it today as Hammond pushes it forward for Drundalup it looks like we are going to be defeated at the last hurdle here and it is a disappointing result in the end the Drundalup boy is walking across the stage well deserved but we were totally fm'd in that game oh not the end of the world john paul nathan what are you saying mate so the review of the competition the biggest overachievers were adelaide river and as you can see they actually had a 4-4 win in penalties over campbelltown city and they will be very disappointed and very disappointing for one of our subscribers too, who is a Campbelltown City fan. Okay, and just summing up the Coca-Cola Player of the Year awards, Bill Wilkins was the winner of that. Five appearances, five goals, six assists, and an average rating of 8.92. Phil Zars is also there in second spot there, average of 8.56, six goals and five assists. And there's the Golden Greek himself. George Fakakakis, nine goals, three assists for an average rating of 8.2. So all of those three players can hold their heads high and the inevitable has happened. The squad are very happy with me because we lost a game that we should have won. So they're not happy with my management of the team and they wish to talk to me about it. I'm not going to show you that, but yeah, look at the players that are unhappy. Bill Wilkins, Wayne Kerr, Doug Fleeballs and Harry Dixon Balls can kind of think why Harry Dixon Balls would be unhappy. I did pull him off uh, and not in a good way in the uh, second half when the game was still on the line there. So I don't know guys, what do you reckon? Uh, how much responsibility does a manager actually have on a game? Is it my fault or the player's fault? Happy to put my hand up and say maybe there's a few things I could have done better there but uh, at the end of the day there's players that are missing goals on the field there. And in other news the Sharks are circling and it looks like Dick Splash could be on the move to Sydney FC who have recently won the A-League this year so he'd be going to a successful team and they would probably be a good fit for him he is going to be too hard for us to keep a hold of but uh, it'd be interesting to see where he ends up and the final game of the season saw us playing our rivals Adelaide River and once again an 8-3 win there George Fakakakis did manage a goal for them but it was actually a, a big blowout of a win there so congratulations to the boys they responded in the right way to the loss that they had in the um, coca-cola cup i know they were very disappointed with that so they responded in the best way they knew how and we finished the season unbeaten so congratulations to the boys didn't achieve all our goals and i'm sure the management won't be entirely happy with me biggest win 15 nil over alice spring celtic dick splash finished with 69 goals nice and fuckboy was uh arguably humpty Doo's best performer and alex fisher kept six clean sheets so we're gonna leave it there today guys episode nine will be our season one wrap and then we start into season two thanks for joining us today don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this content and we will see you next episode take it easy bye